committee members. On behalf of Consumer Reports, the independent nonprofit consumer organization, thank you for the opportunity to address the concerns of millions of American air travelers. Three years ago, I appeared before this committee after the infamous Dr. Dow incident, in which a paying passenger was literally dragged off a United Airlines flight. We heard promises that day, but conditions have not improved much for air travelers since then. A wave of mega mergers since 2001 has left just three major network airlines, American, Delta, and United, plus major low-cost Southwest. Many of us warned such lack of competition would leave Americans at the mercy of an oligopoly, resulting in worse service, higher fares, and fewer hubs and nonstop flights. And that's what has come to pass in many markets. Aircraft cabins are more fully packed than at any time since World War II, with passenger loads, load factors at 84%, straining the system to capacity. Seats are tighter as airlines shoehorn ever more passengers in, and the nickel and diming of fees has exploded. Ancillary revenue reached $75.6 billion worldwide last year. Statistics indicate that involuntary denied boardings increased by 57% last year, with almost 21,000 passengers bumped against their will, enough to fill Capital One Arena. That's why we still advocate banning any forced bumping of ticketed passengers. But a central question was never addressed. Why Dr. Dow? What internal airline calculations determine who will be permitted to board and who will be bumped, or worse, dragged off? This is an industry in desperate need of transparency. Consider, searching through multitudes of flights and fares can be mind-numbing due to extraordinarily complex pricing. This is especially hard because most travelers fly less than once a year, and the airlines don't make it easy to comparison shop. Fees can be even more opaque. Sometimes you can't obtain fees prior to booking, even for basics like checking bags, picking seats, changing flights, or even carrying on a bag. It's common now for airlines to block out seats at booking, leaving fewer available for selection, thus scaring customers into paying more. Indeed, basic economy is designed to attract shoppers and then pressure them by upselling. When a flight is delayed, who will be rebooked and who will not? When it's canceled, who'll get a hotel room and who'll sleep on the airport floor? If you're not in a premium class or an elite frequent flyer, watch out. Even safety itself is opaque. There's no transparency on the critical maintenance and repairs outsourced to El Salvador, Brazil, and China, often under far less stringent oversight. Lengthy contracts of carriage provide few rights and guarantees. That's why we still advocate for a comprehensive passenger bill of rights with guaranteed accommodations during flight delays and cancellations, transparencies of fares and fees, and safe, healthy aircraft seating. Because the 1978 Airline Deregulation Act overrules most state consumer protection laws, DOT plays a particularly essential role in protecting passengers, but unfortunately has largely, largely abdicated that role. Consider, in 2017, it cited limited public benefit and withdrew two key rulemakings, while new rulemakings have dwindled. For two years, DOT's Consumer Protection Committee held no meetings. Then DOT appointed someone from the American Enterprise Institute with no history of consumer advocacy as the consumer representative. Enforcement authority is falling far short as DOT issues record low fines. Last year, DOT fined American roughly $77,000 per tarmac delay and Delta roughly 68,000. For corporations that generated more than $44 billion each in revenues in 2018, that's no deterrent. In 2016, Congress, led by this committee, directed DOT to review and, if appropriate, establish a policy to ensure families with kids 13 and under sit together without paying extra fees. For years, DOT was virtually silent, so we filed a Freedom of Information Act request. DOT finally forwarded 136 complaints to us, stating publicly it was unnecessary to act, quote, based on the low number. We analyzed those complaints and were horrified to find cases with children as young as one, two, and three years old assigned seats away from family. Other children were autistic, suffered seizures, or had life-threatening nut allergies. Such policies also guarantee chaos during emergency evacuations and put children at risk for in-flight sexual assaults, which the FBI says are rising. Shocked by DOT's inaction, we created an online portal and soon forwarded over 600 complaints, more than four times DOT's original total. DOT should fulfill this committee's mandate, and we're urging major airlines to fix this themselves, joined by more than 125,000 individuals who signed our petition. We also support the Fly Together Act. Other critical safety issues that haven't been effectively addressed include FAA's troubling oversight of aircraft maintenance outsourcing to foreign repair station, echoing its failed oversight of Boeing 737 MAX. That's why we support the Safe Aircraft Maintenance Standards Act. FAA's emergency evacuation testing has failed to account for seismic changes. Record passenger loads, tighter seats, larger passengers, more disabled, more carry-on baggage, distracting electronics, 
oversized, untrained support animals, and of course, children seated apart from families. FAA's refusal to close a 67-year-old loophole and require children under two to be properly restrained on commercial flights. Recent media reports highlighted raging battles Mr. over- Mr. you need to wrap up. Sure. All too often, DOT serves the interests of airlines, not the flying public. Congress should enact meaningful passenger rights protections and provide greater safety oversight. We applaud the subcommittee for its continuing efforts. I'll be happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. I now want to recognize Mr. Lee Page, the Paralyzed Veterans of America.